What's going on guys, it's Patrick. Back today with another beat breakdown video. So a few days back, I posted today's beat on Instagram and it was also a part of the demo video that I made for my sick new acoustic guitar. This is an Excel Tammany from D'Angelico if you're interested. But the response to the little track that I made was super positive and I thought it would be a great subject for this beat breakdown video. So listen, we're gonna have a lot of fun today. I tried a bunch of new stuff on this track. We're talking recording techniques for acoustic guitar and some different mixing ideas. We're talking guitar layering. We're even gonna talk about mixing live instruments with samples, so yeah, we got a lot to talk about today. I'm gonna play the beat for you first and then we will break it down together, so check this out. Right, so let's break this down and a lot of what we're going to talk about today is the acoustic guitar because that's really what this beat centers around and that's really what I was going for. So everything started with this ascending chord progression and it's kind of cool because the first half of the song really is building us into this kind of nice and melodic release that we get in the second half of the song. Very simple chord progression, B minor 7, C sharp minor 7 to a D major 7. Then we go D major 7, F diminished, F sharp, minor 7. So once I had that, I recorded that guitar part. It's pretty much the same thing for 12 measures. At the end of the first four measures, I do a little... At the end of the second four measures, I hit C sharp minor a couple times before I go back down. And then at the end of the third pass, leading into the next section, I do this little diminished thing. Anyway, let's keep moving. So we have our guitar part down, right? And let's just talk for a quick second about how I recorded this acoustic guitar. You can see here I have my guitar mic'd up with a condenser mic. This is a TLM 102 from Neumann. Now these are large diaphragm condenser microphones, which work great for recording acoustic guitar, but a lot of people would argue that small diaphragm condenser microphones work maybe just a little bit better. In any event, either will work really well. Use whatever you got. If you are looking to pick up your first condenser microphone, I'll leave some affordable suggestions in the description below, but I do recommend going the large diaphragm condenser route. You're just gonna get a little bit more use out of it. You can record vocals, guitars, all that kind of stuff with it, but let's move on. Mic placement should be about six to eight inches away from your guitar, and you wanna point this face of the microphone kind of right between the 12th fret and the 14th fret. Some people say point it in the middle of the 12th fret and the sound hole. Just test this. Find something that sounds good to you. Ultimately, at the end of the day, these are just guidelines and you should always do whatever sounds good. But I found with a one microphone setup, pointing the mic between the 12th fret and the 14th fret works really well. Now, something that you see quite often is engineers running a two mic setup on an acoustic guitar so they can kind of pan the two recordings a little bit and give you a little bit more of a stereo image for the acoustic guitar which is really great, but most of us, myself included, don't have like several super high quality microphones just lying around the crib. So here's another thing that you can do, provided that your audio interface has two channels, which most of them do, and also uh, assuming that you are working with an acoustic electric guitar, you can mic your guitar and also run your guitar DI into your audio interface and record both of those signals simultaneously. This is my first time experimenting with this little recording technique at home here, but I am finding that it gives you like this really nice full and well-rounded acoustic sound. So now that we have the recording set up all out of the way, let's get into actually breaking down this track. So to start, we've got this little lead in. And again, we've got our two separate acoustic guitar recordings. One is panned slightly to the right. And one is panned slightly to the left. From there, I just doubled the guitar chords on a little retro synth with some portamento, some glide. That sounds like this. Mm -hmm. 
And the synth is really just there to be felt. It's adding a little bit to the low end and to the mid range, and it just rounds out the track a little bit. So once I had those two elements, I knew that I wanted to start adding the beat, and I had some ideas for just a simple hi-hat, snare, and kick pattern. Let's check that out real quick. And the pattern was cool, I just wanted to find a couple of ways to like spice it up and make it a little bit more exciting. So the first thing I did, I copied the snare part onto a second track. So I had two snare parts going. And then using Logic's directional mixer plugin, I panned one of the snare tracks hard right, one of the snare tracks hard left. And then I just nudged the left side snare track slightly behind the right side snare track. But anyway, I thought it sounded kind of cool. So then I put down this little shaker part. And then I kind of found myself in that place where I had put down all the ideas that I had, but the beat still needed something. So I started going through a bunch of different samples. And one of the places that I started looking was this plugin called Arcade. It's a subscription based plugin that Output offers. But Arcade is this really cool, like ever evolving sample library that not only gives you like sample packs that you can automatically play on your MIDI keyboard, but you can also take your own recording and convert those into playable samples as well. You have all of these different sample packs that you can pick from that will kind of define almost what genre you're in or what style you're getting from that particular sample pack. And then within each of these different packs, I guess you would call them, there's individual kits. But playing around with this, I ended up finding this cool little snare part that kind of tied the whole drum beat together. So let's check out the snare part. And what I did was I played the whole sample out and then using the bounce and place function, I converted that MIDI data into an actual waveform. And then I kind of chopped the waveform up to fit the song a little bit. So our beat is done. All we have left in this section is this little bass part. And then I wanted some sort of upright piano melodic line that would take us from this section and carry us through the next section. So this is what I came up with. So I kind of accidentally stumbled into a piano and bass part within Arcade, and this just goes to show you the power of playing with a plugin like this. I found these two samples in Arcade, and here's what they sound like. So we kind of have our main acoustic guitar part. So next up, I just wanted to add like another layer and another dimension to this overall acoustic guitar sound. So I played the same chords in a different part of the neck, but instead of playing with a pick this time, I just plucked these chords with my fingers. And again, this part is just to kind of add to what's already there. So check this out. And then the last little rhythm guitar element that I wanted to add was this little plucked pattern. So check this out. So from there I started playing around with some string sounds and I kind of came up with this cool vibe using two different tracks but they kind of combined to make one sound. So on the left we have a Mellotron sound and this is just the stock Mellotron in Logic. And then I took that MIDI data, doubled it on a second track, and I found this really cool preset in Analog Lab. It's called Ambi Strings 2, and it's a Selena sound. I didn't tweak it at all. I left it as is, but here's what it sounds like. It's really faint in the mix, but it really adds a nice character to the overall sound. Here's the two of them together. So 
So continuing to add to our string vibe, I wanted to add just some cello, bass, and violin, and viola, just to kind of give it a little bit more of an orchestral feel. And here's what I came up with. It's a lot of staccato stuff, but it adds kind of just this cool little pulse to the beat. And this was all made using the stock Logic String plugin. And it's not perfect, but it's still pretty good for just some string sounds that you can bury in the track. But there's some really cool different articulation settings that you can use, whether you want to do some swells, some tremolos, some crescendos, staccato notes, whatever you're feeling, you can probably create it using this plugin. And then of course I had to lay down a little acoustic lead part. <laughs> And strangely enough, the last thing I added was this little kind of nature sounds sample. Just some like bird sounds and some forest sounds. I don't know, I thought it sounded cool. And it's buried deep enough in the mix that you kind of don't really notice it right away and then you're like, are those birds? So that's it guys, that's the whole track, that's the whole breakdown. I hope you took some stuff away from this, maybe some new ideas for your acoustic guitar recording setup, or some different ways that you can incorporate acoustic guitar into your own beat making process. In any event guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're digging the way that this guitar sounds, I'll be sure to link up the full demo and review that I did. I'm absolutely loving this guitar, it's new for 2019, this is the Excel. Tammany from D'Angelico. Really great guitar if you're looking for something high quality that isn't gonna break the bank. This is my latest and greatest, my new baby, and I'm absolutely loving it so far. So I'll be sure to link up that demo and review for you guys. But that's gonna wrap up today's video, guys. Until next time, my name's Patrick. I'll catch y'all soon, all right? Peace.